Welcome to CAT Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 4.12. Now this question asks us to find the Norton equivalent of this circuit. So let's start by finding the Norton equivalent resistance, right? So what we have to do to find the Norton equivalent resistance is to remove any independent sources which we have. We only have one independent source and one dependent source. So the dependent source stays intact so we're basically going to take this out because it's going to be an open circuit when we take it out. So now let's draw the, the new circuit after removing the current source. So this is what we have. 2VX and 2 ohms with VX indicated. And we want to find... Um, the Norton equivalent resistance, which means you have to introduce, let's say, a test uh, voltage source of value 1 volt. Right? And this is what we have. So given that we used a test source of 1 volt, this node at the top is also 1 volt. Right? And since we have Vx in parallel with that 1 volt, then we can conclude that Vx is equal to 1 as well. Right? So now I can substitute the one everywhere. So we are now interested in finding the value of IO because RN is equals to VO, which is our test, divided by IO. Our test is one. So this should be our RN. Right? So let's proceed to find um, IO. We are going to use nodal analysis. So using nodal analysis, we're going to say one subtract negative 2vx, so vx is 1, so that's going to be 2, divided by 6, then we're going to have plus 1 divided by 2, then we're going to have, um, finally, negative io is equal to 0, which means io is equal to all of this. So punching that into your calculator, we are going to say this is uh, this is 3, right? So this is 3 over over 6, which is a half, and this is a half as well. Adding two halves, you get 1. So IO is equal to 1. Now, substituting this IO into this equation, we have 1 over 1, which means RN is equal to 1 ohm. 1 ohms. 1 ohm. Doesn't really matter. Um, okay. So that is how you find RN. And we are now going to move on to find uh, the Norton equivalent current, right? So we're going to draw back, draw back that uh, current source which we had, draw it back in, into its position. Then we're going to remove the test source and replace it with a short circuit current, right? Replace it with the short circuit current, IN. This is what we are basically uh, interested in finding. So let's use nodal analysis to find this. So at this, let's call this V, let's call this, this is Vx, because we have Vx indicated over that point, right? And this is In. So let's let's uh, do node analysis at node V. Looking at node V, we're going to have V divided by 6. We're going to have negative 10. We're going to have... Um, now, what you will notice before we go anywhere is that we actually have a... Um, what's this? We actually have a super node, right? But before we do super node analysis, or before we even do nodal analysis, here's what you'll notice. You'll notice that this is a short circuit, and a short circuit has value of r is equal to 0, right? Now, this r is, is equal to 0 is parallel to this 2 ohms, because they share two nodes, right? They share that node and that node. So here's what's going to happen. 0 in parallel with anything is equal to 0, which means we'll also have another short circuit. So the new circuit will look something like this. So which means Vx is equal to 0. So wherever we have Vx, we're going to put a 0. That is 0, that is 0, which means we're going to have a new circuit, which looks like this. We're going to have that 10 amperes. We're going to have 6 ohms. And since this is zero, then it falls away into a short circuit. And this is zero as well, it falls away into a short circuit as well. Then we have this IN, which we have. So what is um, IN? As you can see, you have a short circuit. Again, I said a short circuit has a value of zero, right? Zero ohms. 
and zero parallel to just about anything is equal to zero. So this short circuit again is parallel to this, to this uh, six ohm resistor. So that will fall away as well. Then we'll only have the current source and our IN. So if you are asked, what is the value of the current IN? This is only what is being supplied. That is the only current which is in this loop. That is the only current present. And therefore, IN is equal to 10 amperes.